Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, I want to discuss today with you the subject is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a prophet for the Jews and the Christians? Let's analyze this in the light of the Quran and the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah Araf, Surah number 7, ayah number 157. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who follow the unlettered Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, whom they find written in their own scriptures, that is Torah and Injil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that the mention or the prophecy or the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned in the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians, that is the Torah and the Injil. Now one would analyze that yes, Quran is claiming so, but let's see, does the Bible, the modern day Bible, which claims to have the Old Testament and the New Testament, which is the book of the Jews and the book of the Christians or the gospel of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, which is there in the Bible, does it really have the mentioning of the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Let's see, book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 18, the Old Testament. It says that Almighty God says to Moses, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, like unto you. And he will speak all that is commanded to him. Now this verse of the Bible from book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, it is saying that God is saying to Moses that I will raise another prophet from among their brethren. Now who are the Jews? The brethren of the Jews, meaning the cousins of the Jews are the Arabs. Because from the progeny of Abraham, peace be upon him, comes Ishmael, peace be upon him, and Isaac, peace be upon him. And from Ishmael, peace be upon him's progeny are the Arabs. And from Isaac, peace be upon him's progeny are the Jews. So God is saying that I will raise a prophet from the brethren of the Jews. Now we know that from amongst the Arabs, there hasn't been any prophet after Ishmael, peace be upon him, except that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to them. So this verse gives a light that it has to be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The second point it mentions is, like unto thee, like unto you, O Moses. Now Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is very much like Prophet Moses in various aspects of life. Whereas the Christians might claim that this verse is referring to Jesus, peace be upon him. But if we analyze in depth, Jesus, peace be upon him, was not rather was unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Moses was born naturally by a male father and a mother, whereas Jesus, peace be upon him, had only a mother. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the other hand, had the same natural birth like a father and a mother gave birth to him. Moses, peace be upon him, happened to become the ruler on his people. Jesus, peace be upon him, never became the ruler for his people. Rather, he has been recorded to have said that this kingdom is not of mine. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the other hand, did become the ruler of his people. So Moses and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them both, are similar in various aspects. They married and they had children. They became the ruler of their time and they were accepted by their own people. Whereas Jesus, peace be upon him, did not have a natural birth. Unlike any other human being, he did not have a human father. Whereas Jesus, whereas Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon them both, they had natural, natural birth, were having a father and a mother. So these aspects give us a clear indication that this cannot be Jesus, peace be upon him. Rather, it has to be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because it has to be from the Arabs, as well it has to be someone like Moses, peace be upon him. Let us see further. The very name of Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the original Hebrew language of the Bible in Songs of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. Mind you, this verse is not a prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but the question that is raised is how could it be that in Hebrew language, thousands of years ago, there was the mentioning of a name Muhammad, which never happened to be an, a Hebrew name, nor did it happen to be the name of any person amongst the Jews until the advent of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa amongst the Arabs. Songs of Solomon chapter 5 verse 16, it says, Hikko mamitakim vikullo muhammadim. Hikko mamitakim vikullo muhammadim. The name Muhammad is there in the Hebrew language. The translation in English, what the Bible writers have done, is they have translated it as saying, He is altogether lovely, his mouth is sweet. Yes, as Muslims we agree that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is altogether lovely. But a noun, Muhammadim cannot be translated into another language. It is a general rule across the board that any language, when you translate a noun, you leave the noun as it is. For example, my name happens to be Vasim. Vasim in Arabic would mean handsome. Now I leave it up to you whether you agree with it or not. But you know, the word Vasim, the name, you wouldn't go out and say, I heard the speech of a handsome. I wouldn't mind that. 
but you would be te you know you would be expected to say my actual name my noun whether you call me wasim in arabic or whether you call wasim in english wasim the name would remain as it is because it's a proper noun similarly muhammadim which is in hebrew should remain as it is while translating anyway let's move further in the new testament in the very words of jesus peace be upon him he explains that after him there will be another comforter there will be another spirit there will be another prophet of god as mentioned in gospel of john chapter 16 verse 7 jesus says to his disciples nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you now if you look at this verse jesus is saying it is good for you that i should go away because until i go not away the comforter will not come generally christians discuss or argue here that the comforter here is holy spirit but if you look at it every time in the bible when jesus is speaking about the holy spirit he calls the holy spirit as holy spirit or the holy ghost suddenly why in he in this passage he is titling the holy spirit as comforter moreover when jesus says he puts a condition he says until i go not away the comforter will not come if this comforter was the holy spirit the holy spirit was already there with the disciples the holy spirit was already present much before jesus peace be upon him john the baptist was baptizing jesus peace be upon him and others the holy spirit was already present in the midst of them so it can be anyone but not the holy spirit let's move further gospel of john chapter 16 verses 12 to 14 jesus says i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth shall come he will guide you into all truth it's interesting here where jesus is saying i have more things to teach you so the, some christians think that jesus is the end jesus is the completion but jesus in his own words is saying after me there has to be another person there has to be another comforter there has to be another teacher who will give you more teachings he will show you things to come he will guide you into all truth i say that all truth is al quran that all truth is all the teachings that prophet muhammad peace be upon him brought because he taught you everything all the way from cradle to grave how to go to the toilet how to clean yourself how to take shower which hand to use which leg which leg to use while walking into the bathroom and how all the way how to rule a country he has explained you and given you guidance for all aspects of life it is this that jesus is referring i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth shall come he will guide you into all truth a christian might still argue that this is the holy spirit but let's see further what jesus says in gospel of john chapter 16 verse 13 and 14 jesus says that he will not speak by himself all that he shall hear that shall he speak now according to the christian concept of belief they believe that the holy spirit is god himself is one in trinity is one of the three in the concept of god if the holy spirit is god who is the holy spirit taking the command from why is the holy spirit not speaking by himself why is the holy spirit taking the command hearing and only repeating hearing and repeating is the character is the attribute of prophets human prophets so this verse and this prophecy can be anybody but not the holy spirit and it suits prophet muhammad the best and the most appropriate because further jesus says he will show you things to come he shall glorify me he will glorify jesus peace be upon him now it is only prophet muhammad peace be upon him after jesus peace be upon him the only non christian faith in the world which is of such a high stature which makes it an article of faith to believe in jesus peace be upon him that happens to be the religion of islam so i would like to conclude by reminding that it is prophet muhammad who has been prophesized even in the jewish and the christian scriptures allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that we have sent you not a prophet muhammad except as a mercy to the entire universe as mentioned in surah anbiya surah number 21 ayah number 107 and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have sent you as a guidance as mentioned in surah saba surah number 34 that we have sent you as a guidance for the entire human race wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Please don't forget to like us and share us on the Digital Member Facebook and Twitter. Please also subscribe to the Digital Member YouTube channel in the links below.